Hey guys, welcome back to Redout Productions, and we are here for the third installment of Patch Down Pieces. Now, the past two episodes, we've been sticking primarily to central Westmoreland County. We're moving a little bit farther north to a smaller coal field out of the main big Pittsburgh, Connorsville seams. We are in the community of Wilpin, Pennsylvania, just north of Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Let's go check it out. Wilpin, a bit of a unique name. Uh, people in the Pittsburgh area may associate the name Wilpin with the Wilpin Hall uh, north of the city of Pittsburgh. And in fact, Wilpin Hall and this town actually have something in common, and that is its namesake, William Penn Snyder. William Penn Snyder helped find the Shenango Furnace Company, which specialized in getting raw materials needed for blast furnaces. Shenango actually had their furnaces not really in the Pittsburgh area, actually far up north in Mercer County in a place called Sharps, uh, Sharpsville, Pennsylvania. In need of coke to fuel the blast furnaces, William Penn Snyder purchased several uh, thousand some acres here in the Ligonier Valley, north of the town of Ligonier. And this was kind of a big deal at the time. He purchased this back in 1906. And the reason this was a big deal is most of Westmoreland County was dominated by the H.C. Frick Coke Company. So for somebody to get a pretty large swath of coal rights in Westmoreland County that wasn't named Frick, uh, pretty big to do back in the day. Now, it should be noted that the Shenango Furnace Company's works here in Wilpin were not the only mining operations. There were about 17 slope or drift mines here in the in the Ligonier Valley area. Uh, in fact, just here in Wilpin, I think there was at least three or four different companies competing. Uh, but we will be primarily focusing on the Shenango Furnace Company today. We will get to the other coal patches in the Wilpin area in a later episode. When uh, Shenango began their operations here in Wilpin, they started out with only about 100 employees for both the coal mine and the coke works. They were listed as initially having 167 ovens out here. Now what's unique I've found is they're listed as rectangular ovens. Most of the ovens in Western Pennsylvania are beehive ovens, very simple. Uh, Either their blocks or banks in the hillside where men would have to pull out the coke once it was baked. Uh, the rectangular ones actually were invented, I believe, by Fr uh, the H.C. Frick Company as a way to increase uh, production. Uh, basically, what they did was it, they would take a big ramrod and push it from one end of the oven through the other out into the awaiting hoppers. Uh, but what confuses me is most of the surviving examples in the Wilpin area are regular beehive ovens. Now that being said, those might be from other operations that I'm confused and again, I'm still relatively new to the history of this particular operation. There are, however, rectangular ovens still survive in the Wilpin area. They are part of the Fort Palmer operation. And again, we will get to that in a later episode. Fort Palmer deserves a whole other story. Now, while the Shenango operations had humble beginnings here in Wilpin, throughout the 1910s, they were produ producing quite well, about 300,000 tons of coal annually and 50,000 tons of coke annually. This street sign is a reminder of what became of Shenango Furnace's holdings here in the Wilpin area. In 1925, uh, William Penn Snyder sold his company while he was ahead, sold his holdings here to the Batten Coal, opera, uh, Coal Company out of Pittsburgh. And Batten operated these mines until their closure in the late 1940s. Even today, Wilpin has some of the more picturesque farms in the Westmoreland region. What's pretty cool is you can see uh, behind some of these houses some old outbuildings, which I bet a lot of them go back to the days of the mining operations. So to give you a sense of direction, you can see the Orthodox Church over there, and most of the main portion of Wilpin is on the north side of Hannah's Run. I just crossed over Hannah's Run, and now standing exactly on what would have been the right-of-way of the Ligonier Valley Railroad. Now, the Ligonier Valley Railroad had its roots in 1877 and operated until 1952, and was the main way that coal and coke got out of the Wilkin area. And there were many different branch lines that spurred off in this vicinity, going up, going across Hannah's Run and going up to the mines on the hillside there. On this side of Hannah's Run, a lot of uh, some of this side was owned by the Seeger Brothers uh, Coal and Coke operation. I believe Ramsey also had their operation on this side. I might be mistaken on that. Like I said, there were many different mining companies operating out of Wilpin.
So this is one of the two churches for Will Bland. It was built in 1919-1920. Uh, this is originally it was called the Greek Orthodox Church. Now it's St. John the Baptist Orthodox Church. The only surviving church in Wilpen. Always love the domes you get here on the Orthodox Church. Really stands out. So just to give you an idea, we just moved a little bit to the east of the Orthodox Church. There's the steeple there. And Pulling back. Uh, Wilpin's kind of long. It follows the uh, Wilpin Road throughout the little valley here. So there's many little clusters, many little patches as you go through. Now, in this blacktop area where my car is, this was the site of the Wilpin Hotel. Uh, most of the miners, again, were immigrants as they were in most patch towns in western Pennsylvania. When they first came, they didn't have a place to live yet, so most uh, single miners, they would have probably boarded in the hotel that used to stand here. And I believe it stood here until about the 1960s. And we have found Wilpin's War Memorial. Now, I do not believe they have a full-on honor roll, but this stone was dedicated here in 1959 in honor of the memory of the men and women who served our country in all wars. It's just across the stream to this cool old structure. Looks like it was another general store at town at one point. Even got the light fixture hanging there. Now, what makes Wilpin very special in terms of coal and coke uh, history is that this is one of the few operations that actually have footage. Uh, in 1940, a gentleman by the name of Pete Picadio brought his home video camera out and filmed the bat and mine and coke operations that were here. And there's about 10 minutes worth of footage. It's now available on Facebook, on the Lear Valley Railroad Museum's Facebook page. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But probably one of the, my favorite shots is actually right here. There's coal trucks coming both directions loaded with coal. And you can see the company houses on the right-hand side. So I've just pulled onto Hotel Road, which is essentially the main street to get up to the main patch of Wilpin. So like I said, Wilpin's relatively long on Wilpin Road. There's smatterings of houses, but the true patch at least for the Shenango furnace operations, was right up here. And then just like that, bam, it appears. The company built about 30 to 35 homes up here. I believe these were, in fact, single dwellings. These weren't duplexes. I believe some, some thought most of them were single dwellings when they were first built. Of course, a lot of them have changed appearance since then, and there's been additions added on. Some have been torn down, as you can see to the right. But there's one. There's one of the there's one of the originals. Well, there's another one. It looks like it's in older condition, and it's hard to see because it's overgrown now. But we're looking right straight ahead at the main slag pile. And where the road ends underneath our feet is where the mines begin for the Shenango Mine Company. They completely mined out this underneath this hillside. And once they did that, my apologies. Dogs startle me barking. Dogs always bark at me wherever I go. I feel sorry. I apologize to all the homeowners in Wilpin right now. I didn't mean to get your dogs barking. Uh, anyways, what I was saying right here, this is the main slag pile for, one of the main slag piles for the Shenango operation. And right underneath our feet is where the southern edges of their mines are several feet underground, of course. And they mined out this whole hillside underneath. And up until recent days, there have been different coal companies strip mining this hillside out here. Really cool looking structure over here. Garage today. I wonder if that's something to do with the mining days. And just going a little further east on Wilpin Road, you have still surviving the original school building built in 1915. It's now used as a auto shop and has had a large garage added on as an extension.
And just across the school is what I believe is Boss's Row. It said that there were five houses of Boss's Row for the Shenango Furnace Company. I'm counting six houses in this row, so one may have been a newer addition. Uh, these are definitely the largest of the homes in the Wilpin area, definitely on Wilpin Road. And conveniently, they are right at the mouth of the main coal mines. Uh, this is Roof Lane, and going up the end of that road will be another slag pile. And up there were the main mouths of the coal operations, at least for Shenango. Uh, the railroad had a branch line coming across the valley, right roughly where my finger is, and been on that side of the little run, going up to the tipple, which was up the, at the end of the hollow. And I believe on this side, well, to the left of the railroad tracks, were coke ovens. And just to our right is the main offices for the Shenango Furnace Company, at least here in Wilpin. We're about to make a turn here to go back across the valley and go to the other church that used to be here, but look off to your right. There is a concrete slab with rails still sticking out. I have no idea what this was a part of, but it definitely had something to do with the mine. We'll make our way back across Hannah's Run, and you might be able to see a little white sign. We would have been looking at St. Anne's Chapel about a decade or so ago, but it's no longer here. So Ligonier's population is always fluctuating between 1,000 to 2,000. I believe right now it's about 2,000 currently. But actually at one time, in the early 1900s, Wilton's population was far bigger, and that is again due to the influx of immigration into this valley to uh, be manpower for the coke ovens and the coal mines over here. So there's actually more people living here in Wilpin than the main town of Ligonier today. And why that's so important to mention is there really wasn't a good way to get from Wilpin to Ligonier. Once you got here by rail, you were basically stuck here. Uh, and a lot of the population were of cat were Catholics. Now there is a, there is a Catholic church still today in Lake Deer, Holy Trinity, but it was like that was a very long haul to get down there for church on Sundays and for any other services. So uh, the Catholic Church actually put a second church up here in Wilpin. It was known as St. Anne's Chapel. It was built in 1913. And I believe actually the congregation for this was far bigger than Holy Trinity for some time. So it was very successful. Now in the early 2000s, the Catholic Diocese uh, of the Pittsburgh region have been gotten to shut down a lot of these smaller churches. These patch towns close up or no more operations. Uh, St. Anne's was closed in 2007, 2008. And this marker was put here in commemoration. So I'm actually filming this after our little time gap where my phone died. I went back home and did a couple more research and I believe the re what Seeger brothers were actually doing on this side of the valley was timber operations. I believe, because there's a map that shows that they have coal property somewhere over there. I couldn't find if there was a mine over there, but they definitely had coal property. But I know they were on this side of the valley because the property we're standing on right now was donated to be the St. Anne's Chapel by the Seeger Brothers Company. Now what is still surviving of St. Anne's Chapel is the cemetery, which we're gonna have to climb a bit of a steep hill to get to. One moment, please. Although now obscured by all the trees at one time, you get a pretty good vantage of the town of Wilpin from here. Still can if you squint through the branches. Oh, the cold just took, overtook me up there. That's, I think that's enough uh, exploring for today. Man, my nose is running. Apologies about that. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining us for another edition of Patchtown Pieces. And like I said, this is probably not going to be the only time we come to the Wilpin area. There are several other mining operations that were here in the, this valley. However, their communities are now ghost towns. So that'll be interesting when we get there.
Well, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to Readout Productions to be the first one notified when a new one of these Patch Town pieces comes up or any of my other videos. I do history videos, not just on the coal mining history, I do military history. And sometimes I just do random history on my travels, maybe here in the Laurel Highlands. Who knows, maybe wherever I am. Well, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.